Hi, I'm Clark on Tempters. I'm gonna do a review today of the All Powers B2500. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you how you can extend the capacity of virtually any of these power stations by any manufacturer really relatively cheaply. Okay, welcome to the floor of my living room. Um, it's a strange place to do a video, but I've had some surgeries recently and I'm not allowed to lift anything that weighs more than 10 pounds. This weighs more than 10 pounds. And um, just gonna have to do the video from here. So sorry for the strange camera angles. This is the All Powers uh, B2500. Lots of people are constantly asking me to review these power stations. Um, I usually say no because I just don't want to review a lot of power stations, but every occasionally one catches my eye as being special in some way. And I do read the specs on all of the offerings that come in. This one, first off, has lithium iron phosphate batteries. That's vitally important in my opinion for most people. Now, just a little aside on batteries. A lot of these are based on other kinds of battery technology, generally lithium ion, but not lithium iron phosphate. Now that's an advantage. They actually are lighter and will carry more power per weight. You know, the power density is, is higher. So if you really needed to take one of these um, around like a portable power system, you might seriously consider that technology, but be very careful because that technology has two big downsides. Number one, doesn't last as long. Lithium iron phosphate batteries have a much longer cycle life. So this is gonna be a product you're gonna keep for years and years and years. Number two, they have a tendency when charged too aggressively to burst into flames. Um, I've seen more than a few reports of people charging these inside their house and then we get home, they don't have a house anymore. Um, that's bad. That is really sad. I feel for those people. But if you're on a boat and that happens in the middle of the ocean, your choice is drowning or burning. So I don't allow any other batteries of any real size other than lithium iron phosphate on board my boat. And I recommend it for all boaters. Anyway, these are lithium iron phosphate. So we can expect a nice long service life, lots and lots of cycles, and we should be able to safely charge them. Well, let's go into the specifications of this guy. Um, they actually list the battery voltage, and usually, if they list the internal battery voltage, honestly, you don't really have to know it, as long as they build all the components to handle that voltage. It's usually a, an odd voltage. But this battery is based on a 48 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. And I'm thinking, hmm, that's a standard voltage. Maybe I can mess around with that, you know? Um, I then noticed that over on this side, there are these plugs for adding extra batteries that the company provides at, at a cost. And I looked at the plug in the picture and I could see there's two great big leads on it. And I'm thinking, I bet you that's hooked like directly to the battery. Um, maybe I could um, hook a regular 48 volt battery to that. I told them, yeah, send me your power station and send me the cable that would connect to one of your batteries. And we went back and forth a few times because it turns out they can't just sell the cable for some reason. Um, I don't know how they must do it if you have a defective cable, but they, they couldn't seem to manage it in the marketing department. So what she offered was that. So I couldn't say no. So she sent me um, an external battery and we'll get into the specifications of this as well. But basically it's a battery that connects to the main unit's battery just to give you more capacity. So you can last longer and support more things between recharges. While she was in a giving mood, she also gave me this. Um, I'm not gonna pull this out and set it up because it's honestly too heavy. I have a friend that comes by and moves my props for me, but he's not around right now. But this is a 400 watt portable uh, solar panel and it unfolds, it has five panels, 
and you put it out in the sun and run the cables in and plug it into this and this will charge this at 400 watts on a sunny sunny day it's pretty cool i've opened it up i've looked at it i've set it up carefully oh it's one of the better ones lots of good little tie downs if you're going to lock it down legs for holding it up at an angle and what i like best about it is the actual panels though they're in a uh, a frame of just cloth, so they're not like rigid, rigid, but you can see they're the rigid type panels, not the flexible panels. So I think this might have some real durability if you don't abuse it. Anyway, enough about that. Let's get back to this. This power station can be charged off AC power. Hey, let's plug it in. I found that it ramps up slowly, but it'll charge at basically just under like 990 watts, you know, just under a thousand watts, which is a good fast clip. It does taper down when it gets up to like 90% charge, but you know, you'd want it to, wouldn't you? Um, so that'll charge it right up. Over on the panel you can't see is also a reset button in case, you know, things overload. And the input for solar panels for the MPPT charger. And that uses this kind of plug right here. For outputs, well, I guess in and out, we've got these cables over here that hook the two batteries together. We have USB, your normal selection. Um, these, and the panel here says it goes to 100 watts. The manual says it goes to 200 watts. I don't know what to believe and I can't really trust, or I can't test. I don't have any 200 watt USB devices and I have no metering to find out what's going on. But, you know, 100 watts is still a lot. And then it has A's. Um, for some reason, these two go to 18 and these two go to 12. The switch for them is right here that turns on this section. This section can be turned on with this switch and it gives you your normal cigarette lighter. Never pull more than 10 amps from a cigarette lighter. Um, that's what it's rated for, but never do it even in your car because the plug is so horrible it will melt if you draw more power through it. And um, don't ask me how I know that. Um, also some barrel connectors, also rated for 10 amps, your normal barrel connectors. That could be handy. But this is why you buy it. We've got a whole bunch of plugs and the, all of them together are rated at 2,500 watts at 110. This one's interesting in that it's that larger size that's used in campers a lot. So that could be handy. The 2,500 watts is continuous. Uh, they'll handle pulses of 4,000 watts, which is important to start motors and such. But 2,000 watts is a goodly amount of power. Again, I found a little confusion. This is labeled 110. Um, the manual says 110 to 20. But I went through the app and I went through this and I can't get 220 out of it at all. I think what they mean by that is they have a 110 version and they have a 220 version. I also know they have a, a 50 hertz and a 60 hertz. In the US, I ended up with a 60 hertz, so that's all good for me. The battery is similar. Um, on the side here, it doesn't have a solar input, but it does have an input for AC power. It, I assume, charges at the same rates. Um, this one's charged up to 90% right now, so it'll only charge at a lower amount, probably 600 watts. But again, we have some USB and we have a car charger slot. But generally what's important is this guy, which connects this to this, so the two batteries go together. So this guy is 2,016 watts. This guy can hold 1,152 watts. But what if you want even more power than that? And that's quite a lot of power, by the way. But if you wanted more power than that, why can't we use something like this? I did a review on this a while ago. You may have seen it. Um, I had the battery sent to me because I had a specific need for a 48 volt um, battery, but that deal kind of fell through. So I now own a 48 volt battery. And this is a 100 amp hour. So basically this, is twice the capacity of this, and this is twice the capacity of this. Wouldn't it be nice if we could use this too? Because these batteries per watt are cheaper than their batteries. What I'm gonna suggest may not be the most efficient way to do this, but it definitely will work. 
So let's talk about the solar input. Solar input is an MPPT. And the MPPT is saying, you give me any voltage you want and I'll play with it a little bit, run it up and run it down and I'll find the most amps I can eat. And, um, and, and then we'll get the most out of those solar panels. But it doesn't technically know you have solar panels. So I've hooked up a 48 volt uh, battery, which is, you know, up in the 50s right now. Let me unplug this. It's charging at 360 watts due to the fact it's mostly charged. Anyway, I'm gonna now plug this in. So I plugged, and make sure you get the polarity right, but I have plugged uh, the solar MPTT input directly to the poles of this battery. And the input watts are climbing up slowly as it's looking around for, you know, the right solution. Pretty easy on a battery. Uh, had it known, had it on a cheat sheet, it would say just maximum voltage, go for it. But it's gonna figure it out. And in comes, well, it's going up, it's above 600. Okay, seems to be stopping here at 677 watts of input. Put my little meter on the, the clip-on meter on the uh, line to figure it out that it's putting out 12.7 um, amps. This thing will accept between 12 volts and 150 volts at 13 amps maximum. Well, look what's happened. It's got a battery hooked to it that's in that range, so it won't hurt it. And it has 12.7 amps, which is yeah, 13 from a point of view of electronics. You know, it's close enough. Uh, and it's doing its thing. So we're discharging this battery into this battery. Is that the most efficient possible way of moving power? Oh, hell no. Is it practical if you wanted to extend? <laughs> hell yeah. Um, because I have a lot of battery there that didn't cost me a lot. And you can do this to virtually any of these. Now, if you want even more battery, just keep that voltage in mind. It's not going to ever pass more than 13 amps. So if you wanted to move power faster, raise the voltage. If I owned more 48 volt batteries of 100 amp hours, I'd put them in series, two of them anyway, and that would give me, you know, they're a bit over 50 when they're sitting there. So that would give me about 100 volts. And then this thing would take in not 600, but well, the max. And I believe the max is actually 1000 watts. But it would be the best way. Um, higher voltage, lower current is uh, less heat being lost in wiring and such. It's always more efficient. If you only had 12 volt batteries, use one of those. It goes to 12 volt. If you had a couple 12 volt batteries, use them in series. Same thing. I like this device. I'm keeping this device. Um, my house is in Florida. I've usually been on the boat during hurricane season, but uh, the way the health thing is going and all the tests and how they want me to stay around for a little bit, looks like I'll be here for at least a couple more months. If I find myself in Florida during hurricane season, like I did last summer, it's likely that I'll get hit by a storm because, you know, Florida. And uh, when I get hit by a storm in the past, I've lost power to my house from uh, the shortest is like 24 hours and I've had it last longer than a week. Well, this is gonna be really helpful. It's gonna be like semi-permanently installed in my house. So I have a lot of battery backup. I have got plenty of power to run the refrigerator, computers, things that keep my life okay. I think technically this would run my main air conditioner. So, you know, if it got real hot, I would do that. Um, solar panels, of course, I could put outside, get some more power out of that. Uh, I have a camper I have set up and that camper has a lot of solar panels. And there's no reason why that camper can't feed this system as well with an appropriate cord. So I can make my house energy independent without having to do the installation. Now, the right way to do it is always the installation. If I was going to really live here a lot, being who I am, I would probably do the whole roof in solar panels. I got a nice flat roof. Um, most of it is exposed to sun all the time. Got some trees on one side. And I would install, you know, solar charge controllers, inverters, probably do a whole Victron system in there, make a quick grid tie, disconnect. Oh, wouldn't it be cool? That's the way to do it, to get the best components all separated. So if you have one failure, you change it out. It's the best way. But just like stereos in the 70s, 
you know, the smart guys, the guys who were really into it, they bought components and they had a problem with the tape deck, threw it out, got a new tape deck, yay. Other people just didn't want to hassle with it. They just wanted a simple system and they wanted a portable system. They would get the boombox approach or the all-in-one stereo. That's what this is. And it's not wrong. You just have to accept that, for example, if the charge controller on this were to fail, I would either just function without a solar charge controller or it has to basically toss it away. I didn't mention, but it does have Bluetooth and a phone app that lets you turn on and off everything and look at all the meters, which could be handy. Oh, one other thing it has that I don't want to forget about, and I did test it, is it is a UPS. So you could plug it into the mains. Once it's all charged up and you plug in a, um, a device, a sensitive device, that device runs right through the unit without using the battery. And that'll keep going like that until the power goes out. When the power goes out, the thing switches over in 15 milliseconds, which is even fast enough for a computer. And you get to use all the battery available before the device fails. If you've got something important that needs to um, not fail. And I have friends in Florida that leave their fridge running all summer and they want to know, you know or freezer and they want to know, you know, um, if it's, it's worked, was there a power outage? Can I trust the food? They use the trick where you take a glass of water and freeze it and then put a penny on top. And whenever you come back in the fall, you look, if the penny is still on top, you know it never thawed inside. But if the penny sunk to the bottom, well, power went out. Anyway, that could be um, not even an issue if it had one of these, because maybe this battery would last longer than the power outage. Power comes back on, no problem whatsoever. Okay, that's my review of the All Powers uh, B2500. Um, I approve of this device. I like it. Haven't used it a lot yet, but I expect it to work really, really well. And um, thumbs up.